Okay, here we are again. We are about to mask the um, boat for the varnish. So I have the masking tape and I have some denatured alcohol which I'm going to use to wipe down the wood before I mask it and get all the dust and dirt off of the wood before I put the varnish on. So that's where we are now. Welcome back. I'm about to start wiping down the coach roof and the grab rail uh, to prepare it for varnish. So basically the steps I'm going to follow is I'm going to wipe down all the wood with denatured alcohol probably at least twice and clean the area surrounding it as well because I need to put tape down and I want to make sure all the surfaces the tape sticks to is clean as well. And then I will put down some masking tape and then we can start doing some varnish. So, uh, so I'm using these blue rags. I know there are better choices, but this is what I have. And it seems to work acceptably well. I do get a little bit of lint, but it's not the end of the world. So putting some of the denatured alcohol on the rag. I'm using gloves, of course. And just basically just wiping down the wood. As you can see, the wood is going to get dramatically darker. Um, the African mahogany, and you can see how, um, how much dirt is actually still on the surface even after sanding. Um, but the African mahogany is really, really, really dark. It's going to be, look really, really beautiful, but it fades so quickly. In a couple seasons, it'll be back to blonde. So I know some people prefer the blonde color, so don't fret. If you have African mahogany, it will go back very very quickly um, to the light color. I wish it would stay this color. I like the dark color a lot but it is what it is so I don't think you necessarily need to watch me wipe this down but I wanted to give you um, just a brief summary of what I'm doing and what it looks like to wipe stuff down so this should work well. I used to use the uh, thinner for the varnish to wipe down um, and then I used acetone as well neither really gave me the results I wanted so I was given this tip to use the denatured alcohol so we will see how that goes this year it's supposed to be a good cleaner and we'll see how well that works but I'm really thrilled with how nice this wood darkens once the liquid gets on there so um, I'm going to do this, at least, like I said, at least twice. First one just to get the bulk off, and then the second one to get any stragglers. And then just before I varnish, moments before I varnish, I'll go over it with a tack rag to get any dust that's settled since. So I want to keep the surface as pristine as humanly possible so I don't get any dust in it and minimize air bubbles and get a nice finish because the first few coats really will set up the quality for the remaining coats. If you get the first few coats just right, the rest of it should look really, really good. So, and I have this little brace here on the window because it was popping out, so I cleaned up the adhesive behind it and put new adhesive. And this is just pressing the glass into the wood to ensure that it sticks this time because it, it did loosen up and I did have a little leak, so that's why I have this little brace here. I want to make sure that that adhesive sticks well. So that's where we stand now, and I'm literally just going to be doing this wipe down probably for the next hour or two, and then we can get going on masking. Okay, so I have taped the coach roof to get ready for the varnish. So I wiped it down twice, got it nice and clean, and I didn't bother taping how I taped the boat because it would be shockingly boring. And I think most people understand the concept of taping um, before you paint or varnish. So it's all done. Um, I'll explain what I did anyways. I try to keep the tape about an eighth of an inch away from the wood. So it kind of paints onto the, um, the fiberglass so it'll kind of seal the edge. Because that's usually where the problems happen. Um, I'm using three different types of tape. I'm using this three quarter inch tape, the 233 plus tape. 
It's very good tape, crazy expensive. I'm just using it because I have so much of it and I found that the cheaper blue tape works just as well on smooth painted varnish, uh, smooth painted um, fiberglass. So I'm going to use the blue tape, but I'm going to use up the green tape. And then on the deck, this is actually rough surface tape. It looks the same color as the 233 plus, but it's made for rough surfaces like concrete and other surfaces. So that seems to work well on the rough teak surface. I will get some bleed under. I know I always do, but that's just the nature of painting or varnishing on a uh, rough surface. So I did around the windows, I did around the Durad boxes. I didn't have to do around the hatch because it's all on the top surface and these I will just touch up using a painter's, like a detail brush. So everything is masked. So next thing I will be doing is mixing up some varnish and starting to varnish. Okay, we're getting to the fun part. So. Everything is cleaned and masked, so now it's time to put on the first coat of varnish. Um, so I'm going to be using this high build varnish. Uh, it's designed that you can overcoat within a day or two after each coat without sanding. So that'll help me build up. I'm probably going to put on a total of eight coats, so probably six of these, and then I will finish it off with traditional varnish for the last two coats. I will probably sand after the maybe the third or fourth coat just to get it to a nice smooth surface because um, any kind of imperfections will get uh, transmitted through each successful layer so I don't want to get too much of a um, any kind of mistakes or any kind of drips. I don't want them to build up too too much. So I will block it after probably four coats maybe that's what I did last time so in the first few coats are going to be thinned quite a bit so the first coat will be thinned 50% so 50% of the varnish and then 50% of the thinner so that'll be really 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 weak and this is for good penetration into the wood um, so it'll just suck up this um, varnish on the first coat and we can come back tomorrow and apply the second coat. The second coat, I will probably maybe make it about 25% of thinner to 75% varnish. And then the next, well, maybe I might do 50-50 on the second coat. We'll see. And then the third coat will either be a 75%, probably be 75% on the third coat. And then on the fourth coat, it will probably be um, full varnish. Um, so you just... You need the penetration on the first few coats, so that's why you um, thin it out quite a bit. So that's my methodology. Um, feel free to comment on what you do, what you think I'm doing wrong. Um, this has been working out for me for 15 years, so um, I'm happy with this method. So basically, and the other thing I love are these little lips. When you take the cap off, you can put this on the lid on the lip of the can and then you won't get a big uh, mess inside the groove. Yes, I know you can poke a hole in the lip and let the varnish drain out, but this is really kind of nice. And then I do have um, the original rollers, which are really nice. And I will filter the varnish. Probably don't have to, but um, that's just something that I've always done. And well, that's about it on this end. So um, let me get to a mix-in and we will start applying it. So I'll tape mixing it. I don't know if it'll make the final cut, but we will see. And this, ha this varnish actually has a very peculiar uh, smell to it. I can't describe it, but it doesn't smell like regular varnish. But it um, it's kind of weird. But it's nice. Putting on the gloves. Okay, 
Okay, so this is nice and clean. I cleaned it up a few minutes ago. So put this on the edge. And I can already see some dust in there. So that's a good thing that I filter it. I don't want the dust to get on to the wood. So I will use this paint stick. And I actually like to reuse the ones that have already been mixed because they're nice and smooth and they clean up really nice. So I'm going to wipe this down. And let's mix this up. You, this is not nearly as thick as the regular varnish. It's actually nicer to work with, but the regular varnish does give it a much brighter and smoother and um, glossier finish. So once this is mixed, it's actually going to have an odd color. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of got kind of a white or tan color to it. So this must be as exciting as watching paint dry, huh? So it looks different than regular varnish and it smells different, but it does look pretty damn close. Um, and it's actually designed for high building uh, with their system. So, so I don't know if you can tell um, with the color, but it kind of looks like like iced coffee almost with milk. So, and again, the purpose of this series is to show you what it's like to actually own a boat and do all the maintenance yourself. Um, so this is real time. Again, I don't know if I'll use all this because it's shockingly boring. And I know that. So you don't necessarily need to watch me for five minutes mixing this. But you're really going to mix it until it's really, really mixed. So, kind of getting there. drip it down like this so I can look into the varnish to make sure that it's mixed and it looks really close. see the color a little better there. It's kind of like a tan color. Like I said, it's almost like iced coffee or something. So let me put the mixing stick down on the lid and I will take this soup container, which is a good size, and I will pour in a fair amount. Just making a guess of how much I will need. I will be using a couple different brushes. I normally, this is my go-to brush, um, an arrow, two inch. And this is pretty old, but I clean it, and the still looks pretty good. So, put the varnish aside, and now I just put the lid on top of the varnish, just so I don't accidentally put the mixing stick in it after I put. Mix it in with the thinner. And I'm running low on this. I do have another can though. But so that's about where I am now. I want to add an equal amount. Okay, so that's about, maybe it's a little bit more than 50%. So that's fine, dinner's fine. And now it's just a matter of 
mixing it up. And this is like water now, which is a good thing because you want it nice and thin. That's like water. So this will penetrate nicely. So I use this cup. I love this cup. This was a either a Home Depot or a Lowe's special. I think it might have been Lowe's. But a little handy cup. It's nice because you can your handle fit on it nicely, and it has a magnet on there which will hold your brush. So your paint. You so your so the whole thing won't fall all the way in. So I like this. So now that it's mixed, I will get a strainer and I will pour it into there. And I can actually see a lot of dust on top of the surface of this of this varnish now. I can, so. Oh yeah, you can definitely see a lot of uh, dust. And if you look in the strainer, you probably can't tell, but you can see a few specks that the filter caught. So that's that. Don't need these right away. And for the big areas, I will use a roller. And then for the other areas, I will use the brush. These rollers are only about a year old, but they're already kind of discolor. Let's put the sill nice and pliable. So that's what I'm going to use. I have the roller here. That's that. Brush. And there is some dust in this uh, tray, so I want to clean out this tray. Why put thin varnish and filtered varnish into a tray with debris? I will need some thinner because it's not coming out. Again, just talking to myself, so I don't know if this will make the video, but see, you can see how dirty that tray was. A lot of dust in here, so that's why I run those filters on the fan to take some of the dust out of the air. Okay, that's nice and clean. Tray. And the varnish. Now what I do is... tray. It's just a cardboard box that I had laying around. Not too fancy. And then I put I put it in this box just so it doesn't fall over when it's on top of the boat. So put a little piece of tape on the corner. Put this over the edge. And then kind of tape the edges to the box. 
to minimize it falling over. Tray in here. Put my tack cloth in here. Put the towel in here. I will take another brush. I guess I need a thinner brush. And then I will need my uh, painter's brush, this little detail painter for some small areas on the boat. Um, I cleaned that up before. So we're good here. So now let's go up to the boat and start applying varnish. Exciting stuff, I know. I will just do a sample of applying the varnish because it can be pretty tedious and this will take me probably an hour or so. Um, so it's been wiped down it's twice with uh, denatured alcohol, taped. So now just before I apply the varnish, I will use this tack rag and just go over the surface one more time to take up any dust that's settled since I cleaned it. So the most protection you can give it early on, the better the finish will be. So I will do a sample up here which you can't see. So I will start up here because it's a nice easy surface to give a demonstration on. So I'll give this a nice wipe. If you notice I did shut the fan off because we don't want really any air flowing around while I do this. So we'll just wipe this down. Yeah, I generally do it as far as I can reach. Looking at the rag, it looks pretty clean. So this is coat one. So what I normally do is, you're not going to see it here, maybe later, but I usually take a piece of tape and put it on the lifeline. That'll be my marker. Each time I do it, I'll apply a piece of tape so I know which coat I'm on. Because once you get past a few coats, you kind of forget. So here we go. I will use my two inch brush here, put it in, slide it up against the side. I don't, I don't slide off the edge, I just slide it against the side of the cup. You don't, want to, you, you don't want to scrape off all the varnish. Then I try to keep this as close to the boat as possible, well, the coach roof as possible, so I don't want any drips. So here we go, so I will apply it here. And it looks really nice. I go as slow as possible because I want to feel the varnish leaving the brush. And again, this is crazy thinned. So. And on, on the last coat, I will probably varnish on the inside. I didn't say on the inside of the grab rail because it didn't really need it because it's really protected from the sun but I will give it a coat on the last coat but you can see how this looks really nice I just love that color um, it looks nice and smooth now because it's so thin it's just being sucked into the wood I can actually see it drying out as I speak so I will take this slowly I'll do the grab rail first then I'll do the coach roof well, I should probably do the, the rads before I do the sides. So I will stop it here. Okay, so I finished doing this one grab rail, and you can see how it's kind of got a matte finish now because the varnish is being absorbed into the wood. Uh, initially, it was nice and bright, but it's being sucked in now. And it looks just from that one coat, looks gorgeous. So I will now show you what it looks like when I do the. Um, mahogany on the coach roof is going to look a little different even though that is mahogany so let's try this out here Got my two inch brush slap it against the side I don't want too much but I don't want to get rid of all of the varnish off the brush got to get this closer so I don't get any drips where am I here okay so I'm just going to do this one area. I don't necessarily need to start at the edge on this coat. But you can see how dark that is compared to the sanded surface. 
and since I have the frame off of this I'm going to varnish um, probably the three or four coats and then I'll put the trim ring back on I still need to seal around the opening and then I will put the cover back on but for now I just want to kind of seal the wood with the varnish before I put it back on but this is the best part of this job is putting the varnish on my philosophy has always been people say oh you have to do varnish on your boat my philosophy has always been I get to do the varnish on this boat because it's just so satisfying when you get a result like that because that just looks absolutely beautiful it hasn't looked this nice in probably 30 years since the previous owner varnished it so I'm like thrilled that I get to do this particular project I'm very very happy that I'm allowed to do this project and I have the ability to do it so this is just stunning it's so rewarding to see the fruits of your labor uh, come true in real time like this so um, that's about it for now I will continue to uh, varnish the trunk and do the other side so that's about it for now thanks for watching okay I did a small section already and I just wanted to show the progress so it looks absolutely stunning I am so thrilled how good it's looking so I stopped about here you can see the color difference how shocking it is so this is going to look gorgeous it's a nice dark maho African mahogany color for about a year or two and then it'll start going blonde again but that's just the nature of the wood so I'm like real happy with with the results so far and this is literally just the first coat of the thin varnish so I just wanted to give a little preview we will see more results later thanks again for watching okay I finished the first coat of varnish I could not be more thrilled with how it came out really looks stunning I am actually speechless at how good it looks I mean that is just unbelievable you saw how it looked before how blonde it looked look this is the natural color of the wood this is African mahogany and it is just stunning so all that pre preparation definitely paid off all that scraping and sanding so if you're going to be doing a job like this don't skimp on that part so uh, that's it for now. I just wanted to give you a quick update.